it's really funny with all this uh, reading going on and sharing of devotionals, beginning to feel like a spiritual fat cow. <laughs> Gonna have to exercise some faith somewhere, do something different. Oh, wait a minute, I think I already am. I'm all over the internet. You know, one of the great things about ages to ages life, that's what eternal means, by the way, is ages to ages. It's a word we use called aeonio, or, hmm, that's the Greek. I can't even think of the Hebrew. But the word in Hebrew for eternal designates ages to ages, meaning here's point A, and here's the beginning, and here's the end, but it doesn't end there because a new age begins, and a new age, and a new age, and it keeps on going, and that's kind of where the old idea of dispensationalism came from, except for people got carried away and thought that God would only do something in some setting, and that's stupid, but anyways, the point being is that in ages to ages life, there's something always going on in each one of the ages that makes it an age, which is great because when you die, you are moving into eternal life or ages to ages life. That means that there's something new going on constantly throughout eternity. You're not going to be sitting on some dumb cloud playing a harp like one bro said in the old hippie dippy Jesus movement days. But there's always something exciting going on in heaven, I tell you. And we've got a whole universe to explore. And God has a whole eternal volume yet to be revealed to us in each age. And we keep learning. You won't know it all when you get there. That's for sure. And I don't know who told you that, but it doesn't say so. You'll be learning. But here's the point. The exciting thing is throughout time, God has always met people where they're at. And he's never changed. If you found Jesus walking in the sea and got out of the boat, started to drown, he'd pull you out as he did with Peter. He was that real. In the Jesus movement, there were miracles where some people met someone, and there's only one word they describe him as. And all I can say to you is that anything that you've ever read in scripture is still happening today. Miraculously, as well as everyday normal life. It's that real if you look for it. You don't have to invent it with faith. You don't have to pretend with your imagination. You don't have to contend with it with some kind of apologetic explanation. All you have to do is watch for it because God is going to meet you where you are. I heard God speak. I was floored and speechless. <laughs> Imagine me, speechless. My whole purpose in being for sharing devotionals in an emotional format is to tell you these things so that you would go far, far beyond that which I've experienced. And <laughs> baby, I've experienced a lot. But that you would walk literally with God that you would talk every day with him. That you would know the fullness of his joy. And that you would reach out and touch a physical being that is Jesus. I pray you know him more than I do. Be satisfied. Boy, didn't we just mess that up? <laughs> the poor and afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord. They who diligently seek for, inquire of, 
and for him and require him as their greatest need, may your hearts be quickened now and forever. Many people constantly seek the thrill of a new experience, but every new thing eventually becomes an old thing. Sooner or later, people have to be happy with old things too, or they will never reach God's higher goal of contentment. See 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. In Philippians 4, 11, and 12, Paul said that he had learned how to be content and satisfied to the point where he wasn't disturbed or disquieted, no matter what state he was in. He could live in humble circumstances or enjoy plenty. He had learned that the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, was to be content. Seek contentment in God today, and you'll be satisfied. You know, it says contentment with godliness is great gain. But if you're like me, you kind of go, well, yeah, but how do I get it? <laughs> There's only one way that I have ever been content, and I am the most discontent person you will ever meet. When God is present, you're content. When you see him, you're content. When you hear his voice, you're content. Trust me, it will blow your mind completely. It isn't like a drug that you need more and more of. It's like a, corny as it sounds, a filling and fulfillment. It's like a deep breath that expands inside you that never ends. And it keeps you expanding. It allows you to go beyond the boundaries of this physical body, so to speak, and to be at one with God. The Father is looking for you not because he has to find you but he's looking for you to see if you want to know him in that way when you do you'll be content until then start your day right and we'll keep working on it